time to uh, call on my colleague from Louisiana, uh, Representative John Fleming. Well, I thank the gentleman, um, Dr. Gingrey, uh, and, of, and of course, uh, Dr. Paul Brown, my other colleague who's here tonight, both gentlemen from Georgia. Uh, I want to thank you both uh, for my appreciation for your leadership in holding these special orders. Uh, you know, we, we did a ton of these special orders back during the health care debate. And I got a feeling we're going to be, a, be doing a bunch more because in my opinion, my humble opinion, I'm just in, ending my first term up here, but I have a feeling the health care debate has just begun, uh, that this thing is far from over. Uh, as a preface to, to my discussion about health care, I want to point out and remind everyone, and certainly um, the, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the fact that we are in desperate need of reviving our economy, 9.8 percent unemployment. And as I travel around the country, and particularly in my district, there are three main reasons for that <laughs> given to me by employers. Why aren't you hiring people? And this is what they tell me. Number one, our tax situation is so uncertain. We don't know what to expect. And hopefully soon we're going to put certainty back into our tax policy by not raising taxes a single dime on any individual in this country. Number two, they tell me that uh, banks are just not lending money. Uh, and there's many reasons for that. We're not going to get into that tonight. But the bottom line is credit is not available to businesses. And then finally, and I think most importantly, is the Obamacare. Obamacare has created such a monkey wrench into the machinery of the economy of this country, uh, creating such uncertainty and difficulty in planning that employers are just frozen with fear. We know that as soon as it was passed, immediately companies began to come out and talk about how it was going to immediately eat in their earnings. Uh, we get uh, continuous reports of how the premiums are going to go up for the employees as well as the employers, all things that was guaranteed to us by the President would not happen. But I'll just give you a quick story. Uh, I spoke to uh, a gentleman who owns a small company in my district. The name of it is uh, Explo, and they have a very unique kind of business. What they do is they have the responsibility, explosive charge that's normally used in a cannon uh, uh, that uh, has, for some reason, grown too old and no longer usable, they actually recycle that. They tear it down and they take the various parts. And, of course, it is an explosive, so they do have some risk in all of this. And they have a five-year contract to dismantle thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of these explosive charges that actually uh, propel the shell uh, from the cannon to, uh, to go to its destination. And he said, you know, I've got a good contract. I don't have a big margin, but I do have a margin that I can make profit. But he said, you know what? With Obamacare, that margin is totally wiped out. If I stay in business, I'm likely to go out of business and go bankrupt. So just that uncertainty, just that one little factor can make the difference in a company from maybe $100,000, $200,000 a year profit to losing two or $300,000, which a small business owner can do maybe one year, maybe two years. Maybe he can borrow money to get by. But this is the reality that faces Americans around the country, 700,000 small businesses. Uh, when you enter this unknown about Obamacare, and it just simply freezes uh, the businessman. So I can say that uh, FDR, uh, President Roosevelt, had it right when talking about the Great Depression that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And right now, small businesses, businesses across the land, are in desperate fear. They're afraid to make those valuable investments because they just don't know what next week, next month, next year is going to be like. And I would say that the largest cause of this is health care, the health care reform. So just to kind of reiterate that before I yield back, uh, Mr. Speaker, we have three things that businesses identify as roadblocks to success and to hiring. One is lack of credit. Number two is uncertainty about taxation and health care reform. And we're about to tackle the taxes. 
I think the banks are going to be turning the credit around. So the one thing that we have ahead of us is Obamacare, which is, I think, a big stumbling block to recovery. And I join in my colleagues this evening calling for a repeal to Obamacare and a return to common sense reform methods, which we will do uh, with piecemeal legislation, one step at a time, incremental reform, testing and listening from the American people to what they want, rather than forcing it down the throats of those who have to pay for this thing. Thank you, and I yield back. Dr. Fleming, thank you, and thank you for being with us this evening. Before I uh, defer to my colleague from Georgia, uh, Dr. Paul.